I've had a long time to think about it. And to be honest, it's still not a kick, what? Is it Thursday? Sure is, it's the best day of the week because it's time for another edition of Steve's Dang It's, where we take a look at the biggest dang it's from around the NHL over the past week. Highly anticipated this week, I can't imagine why. Certain uh, uh, kicks may be brought up, perhaps an offside or two, not gonna name specific ones. But let's start with a double dang it, the rare double dang it where a player from each team gets dinged. Ironically, this play was in Steve's hat picks just a couple days ago because it's a Josh Manson save. It's also the reason that it's a dang it because Josh Manson doesn't play goalie! Darcy, what are you doing? He's been in, Bednar hasn't been able to take him out. Here's a chance for the Blues, moving up. Butch David to pass back, Kemper trying to get into position. Manson stopping the puck and all of a sudden Kemper found it and he thanks his defenseman there. Oh, I'll tell you what, ice through his veins, Jordan Cairo though. Talk about moves. Had the between the legs goal in the first round versus the Minnesota Wild. And this one here, beautiful pass. Bushnevich finds him back door. He's got Kemper down and out. Waits, waits, goes to the backhand and Josh Manson playing goalie, keeps that one out. What a situation there for Manson, just gets himself in front of that one, blocks the backhand, Kemper can swallow it up and get the whistle, but poised by Jordan Cairo. This is an overcorrection from an overcorrection. Darcy Kemper goes way too far this way, way too far this way, takes himself out of the net to the point where he is no longer the active goalie, it's his defenseman, and had this gone in, it would have been an enormous dang it on Kemper, especially because that was game six in Colorado out of winning that thing uh, was not guaranteed at the time. In fact, they were losing. A goal here would have made it 3-1 for the Blues. And speaking of which, good eye from producer Drew here. This should have been a goal. Pay close attention to Jordan Cairo. Why doesn't he shoot this? Beautiful pass, Bushnevich finds him back door. He's got Kemper down and out. Wait. What are you, why? Dude, he's got a clear shot after like the first pump fake. Yes, it's a great save from Josh Manson. Heroic in the playoff context of things. But this is one of the best young offensive weapons in the NHL. Totally bottling it. Like, look at this. He's got it. He's got it. Look at it. Ah! Shoot it! What are you? Ah! I'm sure it's easy for us to say with replay and everything. It's an extremely fast game and that is super slow motion. But whether it's a mistake or not, that was a golden opportunity to put the Blues up 3-1. They don't and they end up losing the game the series and their season. That's a dang. Up next, how is this not a goal? Wasting no time, here's the Blake Coleman kick that, um, well, just watch. Well, Backlund after it again. And it's worked out to center. Dean could not get it past Hannafin. And Backlund's gonna charge back in. Michael Backlund, shot, score! Backlund's signature move. He's on Darnell Nurse. Watch this. He likes to go inside between the stick and the skates of the defender. And there's Coleman driving hard to the net right down the middle. There's Michael Backlund's signature move. Coleman knows it. Nurse doesn't recognize this at the time that it's happening. Oh boy. That's hard to tell, Chris. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be making that yeah, call. I don't know if they would call that to that last angle. If there's an argument to be made that that's a kicking motion, but man, it sure looks to me like he, that's a in an effort to stop, and that's just forward momentum. As if we needed any more drama here tonight. Goldman, who won back-to-back -back cups with. Tampa Bay, 24 points in those two playoff runs. There's more looks at it. Yeah, that, that's, I don't know how you could rule that that's a kicking motion. And what would be particularly frustrating is so, that puck looked like it was going in anyways. Yes. After a video review, there's no goal in the play. The 
Okay. So I was streaming when we were doing Watch the Stanley Cup Playoffs with Steve Dangle. I thought this was a bad call at the time. Now I've seen the replay a billion times. The night of, the day after. I've had a long time to think about it. And to be honest, it's still not a kick! What?! The best explanation I've seen is, ah, uh, Blake Coleman knew what he was doing. I agree that Blake Coleman knew what he was doing, but that thing was not a distinct kicking motion! Dude, this goal didn't count. Okay, this goal didn't count. Here's a look at some of the ones that were. Here's Nate Thompson of the Winnipeg Jets against the Calgary Flames. Look at this thing, boom! Ole, 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 ole! Now a lot of the comments I've seen are, hey, 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 that's a redirection. Yeah, born from a distinct kicking motion! What is the reason that kicking is not allowed in the NHL? Right, because everyone wears extraordinarily dangerous and sharp knife shoes! So if you are not allowed to kick the puck, you shouldn't be allowed to kick the air in front of the puck before then redirecting it in. That counted. Mm hmm Did we get another look at it? Thompson, 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 go! Or what about this one from Chandler Stevenson of the Vegas Golden Knights against the Seattle Kraken? See this? I don't know what to call that motion, but it, it's, it's a flick. It's that, well, how is, that's allowed. That's allowed. That's allowed. You just do it because it's allowed. The Thompson one is the most visually funny one. This one that I'm about to show you, this is the one where I want an explanation for how this isn't a kick. This goal counted. Watch. He throws it down towards the net, the right blocker save. It comes back through and it's gonna hit Chris Tierney's right skate. Now his skate comes off the ice. But as we saw the other night in Vegas on the opening night, the game winning goal for Vegas, it's directed in with the skate. You're allowed to do direct in, but is it a kicking motion? Clearly comes across. He rolls his skate in from that motion. It looks like a good goal to me, and I think it's going to be a good goal. Chris Tierney opens the scoring for the Ottawa Senators to make this one nothing. That's not. That's not a kick. Can, can we get it? Can we put it in the corner? Can we? That's not a kick. What is this? It's a kick. Ah! So to summarize, this goal not a kick. This goal, not a kick. This goal, not a kick. This cardinal sin go to jail. The Flames get robbed of one there. Now, I'm not saying they would have won the game. I'm not saying they would have won the series. Edmonton kind of ran their show in this series. Heck, the way that game was going, there's no guarantee that had Calgary taken the lead there, they would have even won the game. But, that's a kick? That's a dang it. This next play, is a dang it. Followed by a hat pick. Followed by a dang it. Nate just up to play. And Shesterkin. Out of the net. Got himself in trouble. They still couldn't score. With a wide open net. It was Ajo who didn't convert. Now they do. D'Angelo might have been deflected out in front. A power play goal with 11.49 to go. There's still a faint pulse here in Raleigh. The wild sequence around Igor Shesterkin. Ryan Lindgren's going to leave the ice because he doesn't have a stick. Tara Vinen pokes this puck away. Fox actually saves it as he dives into the net here to keep the puck away from all. Oh, you see his body just sag. He can't believe it. And then D'Angelo moments later beats Shesterkin over the glove and it's 4-1. I will never understand the willingness of the best people on planet Earth. Literally the best people on planet Earth when they're standing in a gold crease and their burning desire to leave the place where they're the best in the world. Igor Shesterkin for not the first time in these playoffs, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Yes, I know the Rangers won this game and this series, but dude! And Adam Fox bails him out, bails him right out. Heroic save. Only for the Hurricanes to score seconds later. Ugh. So often you'll see like a heroic save by a goalie and then the other team scores on the rebound. Those are a bummer. This amazing play from Adam Fox being wasted. Ah, that's a dang it. This next dang it also comes from this series. You have to listen. Listen very closely to Ray Ferraro of ESPN. 
<laughs> Please listen. And the puck played out by Kako. Race for Lafreniere as Heedle going to the front of the net. If you're Carolina, you think if I can get one in the next five. Heedle all alone, he scores! <laughs> Never mind. What a dagger. If there was going to be a comeback for Carolina, 40 seconds between the D'Angelo goal and Philip Hedl scoring for the third time in two games. Turnover at the blue line. Hedl's not out of the zone. And he beats Kochetkov with the quick wrist shot through the five hole. <laughs> Listen, I get it. Dude, I was streaming game one of the Western Conference Final, Colorado versus Edmonton, and I'm telling a story about my dad's metal band, and then Nathan McKinnon rudely interrupted it by scoring. But it's just a hilarious listen to hear Ray Ferraro go, oh, if you're Carolina, you might get back into this, and then they immediately get scored on. He didn't even say as many words as I did. He got cut off by Philip Heedle scoring. Less a dang it for him, it's more just funny. More of a dang it for Carolina. That's a dang it. Now, getting back to amazing plays that are ruined by a goal getting scored, Seconds later, Andre Burakovsky of the Colorado Avalanche lays it all on the line. It's a gruesome watch. And then they get scored on anyway. Back up top for Bouchard and Keith. Here's Evan Bouchard. That cuts down Burakovsky. Bouchard will walk in off the skeet wide. Burakovsky's a difficulty scores. Derek Ryan at 328 of the third. And now it's 7-5. Well, you think of the last two goals the Oilers have scored. You've seen block shots that have affected. It was Makar on the McDavid goal, and here, the Burakovsky just turning around, and he's in some trouble. Credit the Oilers. They keep it alive. A couple of bounces down low that looked like the Avalanche were going to be able to clear. And a little turnaround pass by Cassian gets a break off the skate of Manson and right on the doorstep, Ryan. <laughs> That is the one thing I can't get through when I'm doing the streams. Like, I, I didn't even say, oh, Burakovsky blocks the shot. When it happened, I just sort of made guttural, ah! How can you not watch Burakovsky take that puck to the leg and just go, ugh? And while he's down on the ice, the Oilers take advantage and they score all that for nothing. That's a dang it. Last but not least, the piece de resistance. I, did I do that right? Here is the note that noted Colorado Avalanche fan producer Drew sent me. It's very long. This is the next clip. It's the last dang it. Kel McCarr scores offside goal, but wasn't actually offside, despite most people thinking it was offside, because the NHL rules are subjective when it should just be cut and dry, LOL. It's a bit long-winded, but he's not wrong. Take another look. Of the playoffs for Zach Hyman, who had a pair in game one against Calgary. That one finished 9-6. And that comes nine seconds after the Oilers had got on the board. Uh, Kyler Yamamoto has his hand in the air like this, maybe is an offside. Let's have a look how quick. Oh man, it is awfully quick. But another turnover. Another momentum swing. The great players just find a way, and Kale McCarr has created so many of these chances. I think you're seeing a challenge come the from the, the Edmonton Oilers to determine if there's offside. offside prior to the goal. Chris, I was saying it came pretty quickly. Even on the ice, Kyler Yamamoto was having his arm up in the air to his bench, trying to indicate that it looked like it. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, That's this one's side. coming back. Wow, what a break. What a change and what a crazy game again as the last time the Oilers scored, the Avalanche came roaring back and tied it up. And Well, the first one 36 seconds later would have been extremely deflating to give up a, another one after scoring the second goal and getting it back on even terms. Pretty clear cut that this one's offside. Yeah, there, there's no question of this. And to come back you do have to have your skate on the ground as well so i don't think this one should take all that long what a break it is for the edmonton Oilers. but maybe a lesson learned here early on with the back-to-back -back goals as i said before it happened in calgary with 
four goals in a minute 11. That's the fastest in NHL playoff history. And here already in game one, round three, we've seen it twice. I'm not sure if they're not seeing what we're seeing because it's taking longer than you might have anticipated. Puck is all over there, and that one doesn't even show Nachushkin skates that quickly, but I think they have finally come to a decision, and I would expect this one is coming back. After coach's challenge for offside, it's determined that the play was onside, therefore we have a good goal. <laughs> Okay, so for those of you who don't understand why this goal counted, because I didn't, in real time, and you can see it, again, watch the Stanley Cup playoffs with Steve Dangle, I'm like, oh yeah, Nachushkin's offside by a mile, this is going to come back. I didn't get it. A lot of people didn't get it. So here's Elliot Friedman explaining what happened here. So Elliot, you spoke to a uh, situation room, let's get to the offside. Okay, so first of all, uh, in offside reviews, the linesmen have the final call. They're the ones who make the final call uh, down, at the, uh, down at the ice level. And uh, one of the things that uh, happened here is that they feel Makar pushes the puck into the zone and doesn't get control until Nachushkin and exits the zone. And the key here is when you exit the zone, your skates can't be over the line. Like when you enter the zone, your skates can be over top, break the plane. But when you exit, you have to actually touch on the other side. They feel it's a push ahead by Makar. And when the, he finally touches the puck in the offensive zone, they feel that Nachushkin has gotten back onside. So it's a good goal. Now, because I'm not the expert at the rules, one of the things I did was I texted a couple of NHL video coaches on teams that are out of the playoffs, and I said, what do you guys think? And they backed that call. That They said that if they were, if they were t advising their coach, if they had all the angles to those replays, they would say that's a good goal. So two video coaches texted to say they think this was the right call. I'm betting that there's not 100% agreement online, but I haven't checked my Twitter. No. <laughs> to me, there's two dang it's here. Number one, lost in the whole offside review. What's Darnell Nurse doing? The Oilers just scored, they just tied it. Massive giveaway to one of the best players on the planet and he snipes because of course he does. And it's a dang it that leads to a two goal swing because Kale McCarr scores here, the goal counts, the challenge fails, Colorado goes to the power play and they score on that power play and all of a sudden a 2-2 game is 4-2 like that because of a pass that really didn't need to happen. That's a dang it. But here's the biggest dang it with this whole thing. The Blake Coleman kick and also with this offside review. The vast majority of fans have no idea what's going on. None. Now you might be sitting there and going, oh no, I knew, I knew, yeah? You knew at the time, without any TV or internet explanation, you didn't have to look anything up, you didn't read anything, you didn't see a tweet. Like when you see a goal that goes in off a skate, you know when it's gonna count? How likely are you to know when it's gonna count? How many have you seen where you got it wrong? And for this play, how many of you knew that little rule where Makar is allowed to essentially pass it to himself and because the puck, he even though he has possession, it's not actually possession because it's not directly on his stick. How many people know that? And this is a massive problem that the NHL has because there's there's so many of these uh, at every NHL game. What, what are they called? What are they called? Oh, fans! Forget all the fans at home or wherever they are watching the game on their mobile devices, on a tablet, on a computer, on a television. Forget all those people. I'm talking about the people in the building. They paid to be there. They got the jersey, they got the hat, and they're ready to throw the hat that they just paid $30 for onto the ice in the event that a player scores three goals. And they got a $14 beer and a $19 hot dog. And they sit there and an exciting play happens and they don't know what happened. They don't know which way it's gonna go. They're gonna sit through a nine minute review, and this one wasn't nine minutes, but a few of them have been. They're gonna sit through a review that takes far too long for a ruling that they don't understand. 
That's a problem. It's an enormous problem. It's not that the rules are broken or the rules are being misinterpreted. The refs got it wrong. The review people got it wrong. It's that they're too bloody complicated and the average fan doesn't understand them. And you might not think that's a problem, but any business with any intention on keeping and retaining customers should view that as a problem. It's a complicated sport. It's probably more complicated than most sports, most of the major sports, and there's gonna be little minutia and not everyone's gonna know everything. But when the vast majority of your fans have no idea what's going on and they just hear the ruling afterward and they're like, I guess it's right. That's a dang it. In fairness, this is a relatively rare instance. Like how often does a play like this happen, right? But I think a lot of people when this goal happened were like, oh, I understand offside and they discovered they didn't. That's a dang it. What do you think? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Dang it's in Hat Picks merch on shopsportsnet.store. I, I remembered it. Did you see? Ah! In game two, Colorado, Edmonton, tonight, right here on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. What time is it? Google it. What's it what? I can tell you, but Google it. The rule is mm -hmm. as written until until Kale McCarr touches the puck, Nakushkin is allowed to touch up and negate the offside. So until he touches that puck, Nikushkin is allowed to get out of the zone. Got it good and since you understood, forget for a second your preconceived notions. The actual rule is until Makar touches the puck inside the blue line, inside the blue line, Nikushkin is allowed to tag up. The linesman should have raised his arm and lowered it in a split second. That's how quick it was. Now, I know there are a lot of folks pointing to rule 83.3 because they went to the rule book and saw 83.32 made the rounds on Twitter, which states, and I quote, if during the course of the delayed offside, any member of the attacking team touches the puck, attempts to gain possession of the loose puck, forces the defending puck carrier to make further back into his zone, or who is about to make physical contact with the defending puck carrier, the linesman shall stop play for the offside violation. All right, I tried to memorize it, didn't work. <laughs> so I'll do it again. <laughs> this line attempts to gain possession of a loose puck was the I gotcha, I'm smarter than you, Tim, you can't memorize this rule. That's for a delayed offside. This was a tag up. Actually, it was both really quickly, but it went from delayed to tag up faster than you can say Peter Klima. The rule is written for when the defending team has the puck on a delayed offside and an attacking player who hasn't cleared the zone tries to get possession of said puck. Not an attacking player like Kale McCarr. He actually has to touch the puck, not just possession, touch the puck. And I'm, soil, I'm sorry, Oilers fans. I want to crush the refs as much as the next man, but they got it right. Which is why when last night the Hockey Night crew, which I thought in the end did a really good job with this, pulled up other examples of the same rule, which a lot of other players don't know, but a lot of video coaches do know, and the reason they know and do know is because it's happened before. In fact, the best example was Michael Bunting back in 2021, then with the Arizona Coyotes. Nice hat trick game. Mm -hmm. He gets a similar puck entry and eventually gets his hat trick. But let's watch him. It sure as hell looks like he knows the rule too. He touches the puck outside the zone. Puck goes into the zone, lifts his stick up. See here, picks his stick up. He waits for Connor Garland to clear before he touches the puck. It's onside. Would love to know. Would love to ask Bunting if he knew. Sure as hell looks like he knows. And there are at least four more examples that I saw going back to 2017 suggesting 
that not only did they get it right, but it's happened before. Whether you think this is the spirit of the rule is something we can discuss, but by the letter of the law, Jesse, they got it right. Uh, first of all, very well done, Professor Tim. Except.